So how does search GPT SEO work? Well, I spent countless hours studying 528 search results to find out. And in this video, I'll reveal the top four search GPT ranking factors so you can get ahead of your competition and start maximizing this new search engine. My name is Nathan Gotch, and over the past decade, I've led hundreds of successful SEO campaigns, founded Gotch SEO Academy and Rankability, and authored The SEO Entrepreneur. So let's dive into search GPT ranking factor number one, which is keyword placement. So 94% of the top search results had an exact or partial match keyword in the title tag. For example, look at the results for AC Repair Coral Springs, Florida. 100% of the results have Coral Springs and some HVAC or air conditioning as a variation in the title. But what I want you to look at are the top ranking results. At number one, you have Angie, and I'll explain why they're dominating later in this video. And at number two, you have Quality Air conditioning company and they have a perfectly optimized title tag that includes the core service air conditioner repair and the target location Coral Springs on top of it they also have a perfectly optimized URL structure now here's the good news about search GPT its algorithms use ranking factors very similar to those of Google and you've probably seen some stuff floating around that search GPT just uses Bing to fuel its results. And this is a logical conclusion because of OpenAI's partnership with Microsoft, which owns Bing. However, based on my small study, I haven't found this to be 100% accurate. I analyzed the search GPT search results and compared them to Bing and Google to see if there was a significant variance. I found that 50% of search GPT search results match Bing's and Google's. Now here's the interesting part. 76% of search GPT search results match DuckDuckGo. And no, DuckDuckGo is not a replica of Bing. It does use Bing, but it also uses over 400 different sources and an in-house crawler for its search results. But here's the point. Focus on omnipresent SEO across multiple traditional and non-traditional search engines like YouTube, Amazon, and even Etsy. And at a bare minimum, ensure your website is crawlable and indexable on both Bing and Google. Just go to Bing's Webmaster Tools, import your website from Google Search Console, then go to Sitemaps and make sure that you have a current sitemap. So to review, the first search GPT ranking factor is on-page SEO 101, which means you need to include your target keyword phrase in the URL, title, meta description, and H1 at a bare minimum. Now moving on to search GPT ranking factor number two, which is topic coverage. So like Google's algorithm, search GPT prefers pages that perfectly match the search intent and provide the searcher with sufficient information about the topic. In short, the better you cover your topic, the better you'll perform in search engines like search GPT. And you don't have to guess your way through this process. Simply enter your keyword into a tool like Rankability's Content Optimizer, and you'll get access to the exact topics your competitors cover in their content. Then just copy these topics, go to ChatGPT, and use this prompt to create a comprehensive outline. Then just paste this back into Rankability and you'll see how well this outline covers the topic. If it hits the optimal score, the next step is to differentiate your page from the competitors. So if it's a commercial keyword like AC Repair Coral Springs, Florida, add unique ideas about your brand, such as your unique selling product propositions, stories, results, case studies, buyer guides, or even FAQs. And what I'm describing is 100% focused on covering just one topic to the fullest extent. But to drive maximum visibility in search GPT or other search engines, you must establish your website as an authority on your topic. For example, gotchaseo.com and searchenginejournal.com rank well for best SEO books. If you do a simple site colon search like this, you'll find that both websites have hundreds of pages related to the broader topic of SEO. Now more is not necessarily better, but you must create new assets to build topic authority. And one trick you can use is looking at the relevant NLP suggestions early in the video. In my example for best SEO books, I see many topics for which I could create supporting assets such as art of SEO, content marketing, or even on-page SEO. So now it's time for search GPT ranking factor number three, which are keyword rich domains. So 27 
97% of the ranking results had either an exact or partial match domain. And what this means is if your target keyword is St. Louis SEO, your domain name would include that phrase. And when used correctly, keyword rich domains are incredibly effective in Google. And this also seems to be the case in search GPT. For example, AmishBaskets.com is dominating for Amish baskets. MortgageCalculator.org and USMortgageCalculator.org both rank well for Mortgage Calculator. And to no surprise, SellMyHouseFastInAustin.com is dominating for Sell My House Fast Austin. That said, exact match or keyword rich domains are effective for single use cases, but are extremely restrictive if you plan to expand your topic focus or geographical area. However, an exact match domain is a really good option if you want to be surgical on one really important topic. Now for search GPT ranking factor number four, which is website authority. So the top ranking results in our study had a median authority score via SEMrush of 38 and had 74,000 backlinks. This makes sense because the average domain age for the top ranking results was 15 years. Now domain age isn't likely a ranking factor, but the longer you've been around, the more backlinks you'll likely accumulate. And remember that the quantity of backlinks you'll need will depend on the niche and the target market. For example, the median authority score for local search results is only 25. In other words, you won't need as many backlinks compared to national keywords like backlinks where the median authority score is 63. So the question is, how do you get more high quality backlinks? Well, start by ethically stealing your competitor's backlinks. Go to SEMrush's backlink gap tool and enter your top organic competitors. You'll see all of the links that your competitors have, but you don't. Now it's your job to narrow this gap. And then I recommend trying the similar content strategy. And this method only works if you have a unique angle for a keyword. Don't expect to get a link from regurgitated content. For example, if I wanted more backlinks for best CMS for SEO, I'd send the following outreach email to every page that writes about this topic. And then after that, you should use digital PR. So you can sign up for tools like Connectively and respond to journalist requests, or you can use a service like Search Intelligence to save time. And they use a unique strategy that doesn't require creating assets. Instead, you can contribute expert insights to other websites, they pitch a huge list of journalists, and you score powerful backlinks to your homepage. And the backlink equity and trust will flow to other pages on your site if it's structured well. So I'll have a link below the video where you can learn more about search intelligence. Another go-to link building technique I love is leveraging existing backlink authority. So backlinks move the ship, but internal links take your results to the next level. So go to SEMrush's backlink analytics tool and click on indexed pages. Then you'll see the most powerful pages on your website. Then just look for opportunities to add internal links on these pages in a natural way. So since you've made it this far, I wanna show you some bonus material about Search GPT. Number one, Search GPT doesn't prioritize UGC-driven websites like Reddit, Quora, or even forums. Google loves UGC-driven websites, especially Reddit, because they have a business deal. Number two, over 90% of the citations in Search GPT are pulled from the top search results. So if you want more citations, you must rank well in the traditional search results. Number three, the same domain can occupy two or sometimes even three spots for the same keyword. For example, backlinko.com owns three positions for the keyword on-page SEO checklist and lipcon.com owns three spots for Houston Maritime Attorney. Number four, any keyword with moderate complexity or nuance is safe. For example, look at the generic output for SEO for dentists. Most users will need to explore the sources to understand this topic fully, so quality blog content in this context still matters. Number five, content freshness seems to play a big role because on average, most results are less than a couple of years old. Number six, you must disconnect from the old way of thinking about search. This isn't just another search engine. It's a complete paradigm shift in how we search. Back in the day, you'd go to Google, search your keyword, open up 10 different results and tabs, and try to find your answer. Sometimes you were successful, but other times you'd have to go back to Google to search again. And if you didn't know what to search for, you were essentially out of luck. Those days are long gone. The new search experience is interactive. Look at the search GPT output for rankability. You get one consolidated answer with citations to 
explore at a deeper level. And you could follow up on the query with more questions and each new search builds upon the previous one. And this is why you can't just think about SEO for your website. You also need to consider how to get citations, which is really just a fancy word for backlinks on other websites. And the craziest part about these LLM driven search engines is that backlinks remain the most powerful factor. So what's old is new again, even though it never left.